We've covered a lot of different ways to control your computer on this channel. Everything from using the mouse, using a joystick, even foot controls and graphics tablets. But today we're going to cover something I never thought I'd be covering, how to control the computer with your mind. This is Vintage Geek. Just a quick reminder, if you like vintage technology and weird peripherals like the one we're covering today, be sure to like and subscribe. It's gonna help us a lot as we grow. And I would encourage you to consider becoming a member. You can do that at the website at vintagegeek.com. So this one goes into the category of odd finds in our collection. We were actually going through the collection recently, kind of looking for odd topics to cover in the month of December. And this box really stuck out to me. I'm not even sure where we got this from originally, but it's called the Mind Drive. And this is a way to control the computer with your brain. Uh, that is really all there is to it. It's by a company called The Other 90%. And there is a peripheral that comes with this that looks like it attaches to your finger to somehow monitor your brain waves. I'm not really sure what it's supposed to be doing, but there's a lot of software that comes in this box, games including pinball and skiing and uh, some various tutorials that are gonna show us how we can control the computer by simply using our brain. I'm skeptical. I'm, I'm gonna put that out there right now. I don't know how this could possibly work, but uh, we do have everything in the original package, including the device itself, the little thing that you put on your finger, and all of these CD-ROMs. Looks like this came out in 1996, and it was designed to work with computers that could run either DOS, Windows 3.1, or Windows 95. Now, we've covered things on the channel before that required early Windows machines, and I really have become very fond of the IBM Aptiva. It's a pretty cool machine for demoing products like this, as it's an early version of Windows 95, and it has everything we need, including onboard sound. So, let's see if we can make this work, and see if we can actually control the IBM Aptiva with my brain. I'm gonna get started here using the first CD that came with the system, which is the tutorial disc. Now, when I put the disc in originally, I did look at the manual to see what the process is. There's some different steps involved for the different versions of Windows. For Windows 95, they actually had a separate installer. It was very quick, only took a matter of seconds, and the program is installed in its own folder on the computer. So let's get into it and see what we can do with the mind drive. I'm gonna go and open this new program here. It does show up under the other 90%, and we have the mind drive tutorial. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that now. Welcome to the MindDrive CD-ROM tutorial. Intro and technology gives you a brief welcome message and general information about the MindDrive. Makes sense. Getting started will show you how to properly set up your MindDrive. Great. Using the MindDrive will teach you effective techniques for controlling any MindDrive program. Let's go ahead and take a look at the intro and technology. I assume it's going to explain how this amazing device uh, reads your brain waves. So let's, let's find out. Dear technology pioneer, our history as human beings on this planet has been a history of continually using and developing our minds to enhance our civilizations, sciences, and cultures. But up to this point in time, almost everything we think or do must be first transferred to and through our hands, legs, words, and the machines we build. Now following seven years of research and development, we are introducing the Mind Drive. The Mind Drive is a new first step that could lead to directly using our minds in an all new way and for entirely new purposes. Wow, it says I'm a pioneer in a most exciting continuing journey. This is exciting indeed. I'm uh, looking forward to seeing what this actually does. We at The Other 90% Technologies, Inc. consider you a partner in this journey and are committed to supporting your mind drive experiences in every way we can. Have fun. Oh, I assure you, I'm gonna have some fun with this. Let's go back to the main menu and uh, figure out how we get started with this. Follow these simple instructions to properly set up your mind drive. Oh, this is great. I've already done all of these steps, except for putting this sensor on my finger, which is step number six. So uh, let me go ahead and do that now. The picture's pretty small, so uh, I assume that I just do this. I see one problem with this system already, and that is that it's asking me to put it on the finger that I use to click the mouse, which is uh, gonna be a little bit of a handicap here. Although maybe I can just use my mind to get back to the main menu. No? All right, let's uh, use my other finger to move the mouse here. All right, using the mind drive. This section provides you with necessary information about using your mind drive. That makes sense. Wearing the finger sensor. Oh, this is gonna get a lot more detailed. I didn't have to just use that tiny picture. That's good to know. Because the mind drive finger sensor is the only connection between your thoughts and the mind drive, attaching it properly is crucial for successful performance. To wear the finger sensor correctly, insert any finger into the black plastic sleeve. Oh, that's good. You can use any finger. I didn't have to use the, the mouse clicking finger. The center of your fingertip 
grip, the rounded bulbous area should rest lightly on the gold sensor. Adjust the Velcro strap. It already feels pretty good, honestly. I, I don't feel like I need to adjust that anymore. The more lightly your skin touches the sensor, the better your results. The Mind Drive finger sensor is just that, a sensor. It receives signals sent from your thoughts, deciphers and interprets these signals, and then translates them into on-screen computer commands. Because the finger sensor is only a receiving device, it does not send any information or communications into your body. Thank goodness, because uh, I really, really didn't want the Aptiva infiltrating my brain. I only want to control it with my brain. Using your thoughts, general principles of control. In many MindDrive products, you will move on-screen objects and images with nothing more than your own thoughts. This is a unique experience for each individual and there are no hard rules. <laughs> I would assume that's probably true. Like learning to ride a bicycle, MindDrive control cannot be explained simply or logically. I mean, riding a bicycle seems like there is some logic and simplicity to it, but okay. How do you initiate an action in your head to help you turn left? Most of us are familiar with the concept of left brain, right brain. In actuality, left brain and right brain are primarily labels for different types of thought activities. To turn left with the mind drive, increase your left brain or left side thought activity. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this could mean thinking left, saying the actual words left, left, left quickly in your head, looking left, or even leaning left. It's not the actual words that cause the desired movement, but rather the type and level of activity of your thoughts. I mean, it says eventually I can do this with little or no effort. And I'm all about that. Now it's saying to move to the right, you need to go into a more relaxed state, apparently. Do not use words. Instead, relax into ride side thoughts. I assume they mean right side there. You may visualize the images moving to the right, look right, or even lean right. I feel like these are all the same instructions. Do's and don'ts. In the beginning, using the physical cues described earlier, such as moving your eyes or body, can provide cues to your mind, helping you improve your mind drive performance more quickly. While using body movement may initially help you get started, don't let it become a habit. Okay. Oh, they give you some settings. I love a good slider. The Mind Drive is a sensitive device responding to a variety of signals. Sensitivity settings may need to be adjusted for each individual. Before adjusting anything, always try using the Mind Drive's default settings, obviously. Honestly, I'm not even going to read this. I assume that uh, we'll figure this out as we go. One thing I did not know about the Mind Drive is that the programs themselves actually run in DOS, which isn't really an issue except for the fact that the tutorial program seems to be looking for a COM port that doesn't exist, and I was unable to get that to run. But thankfully, there were other discs that came with the set, and one of them is the Mind Drive Skier program, and I assume that this is giving you the ability to control a skier going down a hill using just your brain. This program does load, and it doesn't give me any errors, so let's see if we can control this one with my brain here on Vintage Geek. Here we go. Loading data. A Soft Lab production. Mind Skier. All right. I mean, it looks pretty good so far. I like the sound effects. Race events, we've got slalom, giant slalom, downhill, combined. Looks like there's beginner and advanced skill level. Definitely gonna start with beginner here. Player name, I'm gonna go with default. That seems like the way to go. Well, let's just go and see what happens. Prepare for slalom. Okay, for mind drive control settings, press the F2 key. Oh, this is where it has those sliders it was talking about for thought signal sensitivity and game sensitivity. Looks fine, I guess. Press the space bar to continue. Adjust your speed with up and down arrows. All right, here we go. Oh, well, now see, right now, I guess I'm supposed to be thinking about which direction I wanna go. I can speed up with the arrow keys. Oh no, <laughs> apparently I thought left too much. Well, I made it down the ski hill, 27 gates total. Got 21 of them. Lapse time, 48 seconds. Total time, one minute. Now, I have to assume that uh, I was not thinking correctly because uh, that was not a great run. But I did get a gold medal somehow. Fantastic, I like the fanfare. So I think I'm gonna give this a trial run, but this time I'm just gonna take the sensor off entirely because I don't think that it was doing anything. I think all of that movement on the screen is just part of the game. Now it may give me some error about not having the finger in the sensor. It may be smart enough to know that, but let's find out. See, it's already moving around. Oh wait, mind drive finger sensor disconnection. Please adjust finger. Oh, it's adjusting to me now, it says. This isn't real. There's no way this is real. It's just moving left and right on the screen. All right, here we go. This time I'm gonna think left the whole time. Just nothing but left. Left, 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 left. I lean to the left. Oh, see, that went right. Oh, wait, no, that's, that's left, okay. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that was a, the gate I hit the first time. For thinking only left thoughts, it's certainly moving right. Let me speed things up. 
There's no way that this is actually doing anything other than knowing that my finger is actually in the sensor. At 24 gates that time, that's better, I guess. I guess there's really no way of proving that it doesn't work, which is probably what they're counting on here. Let's try the downhill, see what that looks like. I love the little yodel, that's fun. All right, you gotta concentrate, concentrate hard. Whoa. Again, I don't think that anything I'm thinking is actually making a difference. Certainly if I try to think the wrong direction as far as going off the course, that's not doing anything. You must have a pretty good uh, randomization algorithm in this thing to make it seem like you're doing something. It's the only thing I can think of. I don't know if it's just that whole effect of continuing to play the game. Do I believe my mind is actually doing something to control the skier on screen? I don't think so. But I can't definitively prove that it's not. I'm gonna have to try one of the other games. Next up, we have the other included software, which is Pinball Mind. Like you might expect, this is controlling pinball with your mind. Now, my first thought on this is, of course, are we making the flippers move with our mind? Or are we just doing the initial launch? I'm not really sure. Let's find out. Pinball Mind, a mind drive experience. Well, it looks like we got some different tables to choose from. Jackpot, Pachinko, Dragon. For best mind drive control, press F2. Okay, so this is interesting. There's a little bar at the bottom that's showing between left and right. I assume that's supposed to correlate with what you're thinking, or is it telling you what to think? Hmm. I will say it's a pretty good looking pinball game overall. Now at this point, I don't know if I'm supposed to be controlling the ball while it's in motion. I guess so. I assume that's what that little bar at the bottom means. I don't think that I actually did the flippers on that. I'm not sure if it's doing that for me. Ooh, bonus 3,000 points. Fantastic. But I'm definitely not controlling the flippers. The game is doing that for me. If anything, this might be an experiment in how to make a game play itself and make the user think they're doing it. I will say, though, they nailed the zero effort part of this. Yeah, there is no way to control those flippers. It's just happening randomly. I think, if anything, what I'm learning from this is that my brain is a pinball wizard. A pinball wizard got stuck, got stuck. Good old default with 222,200 points. I mean, the game looks fun. I kind of wish that there actually were keyboard controls for this. My favorite part has to be the bar at the bottom though. You know that's gotta be random. It's just moving constantly to make you think it's doing something. So you start with the initial space bar. Things move around. See, I told it to do that with my brain. I also kind of appreciate the hover effect that the ball has where it's just kind of floating around. It's not, there is zero gravity apparently in this particular pinball machine. Oh, that was a pretty sweet move. I should use my brain more often. I feel like the one really good advantage of this whole system is that this would be a lot of fun as a party game. If you get a lot of people over to your house, you got the computer out, you're just giving different people the sensor. Ah, see if you can do better with your brain than I did with mine. It does look good though. I see, I told the ball I wanted it to go over that red flashing item. It didn't work. Very disappointing. I told that right flipper to move at least 10 times. Yeah, it didn't do quite as well that time, even though it seemed like a much longer game. Overall though, the game quality itself is really cool. It's just uh, very hard to prove that any of this has to do with your mind or your brain controlling the ball or anything on screen. But I'm kind of impressed with the, the actual software design of it, especially giving you that illusion and kind of leading your mind in that direction, thinking that you're doing something useful with it. It's also worth noting that on the back of the box of this thing, did they really make all these games for the mind drive system? I'm not really sure. But if any of you have any experience with the mind drive or maybe you had this when it was new, be sure to sound off in the comments below. Maybe if you played this with friends when you were growing up, I'd love to hear your stories for sure. My brain is on fire. It is worth noting that the original website for this product was called other90.com. If you go to the Wayback Machine, you can actually take a look at this website in its original form, and it is absolutely glorious. You can see the original prices and uh, some of the other games and offerings that they had for it. Definitely check it out if you get a chance. It was fun playing with this today and getting a chance to sample the mind drive here on Vintage. Vintage Geek. Want to remind you that uh, if you haven't already, consider becoming a subscriber. We appreciate it a lot here and consider becoming a member at the website. It's at VintageGeek.com. You can get discounts on admission to the museum, extra video content, and a whole lot more. Until next time, I'm Aaron and this has been Vintage Geek.